How is AI going to impact the way that we work, the way that we live, and our jobs? The short answer is nobody knows. But the long answer is that we have research that gives us some insights on how the future may look like. In this video, I want to tell you what I believe are the most interesting and groundbreaking pieces of research in the world. I'm going to make it easy for you to understand, and I'm going to try to raise a few key questions. Questions like, is it possible that AI can turn interns into experts? And can AI make us finish a full week of work in just three days? Bear with me and let's dig deep into the world of research on AI's impact on the workplace. Recently, I've been doing a lot of keynotes for different companies, for universities, and I always ask this question. I always ask, how many of you have tried ChatGPT? And usually I get roughly 90% of the people raising their hand. Yes, there's people who have not even tried ChatGPT. They still exist. Then the second question that I ask is how many of you use ChatGPT daily for work? And usually I get 10 to 20% of people raising their hand. Then the question that I ask is how many of you want to be 37% faster at your job, 20% better and significantly happier? And people obviously raise both the hands, maybe some of them the feet as well. Everybody wants to be 37% faster, 20% more efficient and happier. And, but these are not just random numbers. These are numbers from an MIT study called Experimental Evidence on the Productivity Effects of Generative AI. So researchers at MIT took two groups of people and gave them some writing tasks. Things like write some marketing copy, some sales copy or write an email, things like this. So they benchmarked how good they were. And then to one group, they gave access to ChatGPT and they asked to do other writing tasks. What they found is that people in the group with ChatGPT were 37% faster, 20% better. If we translate this into numbers, 37% faster means doing in three days the amount of work that you do in five. But now, I'm Italian. I don't think that being efficient is the only thing that matters in life. I think that creativity also is something very important. And a lot of people say, well, AI cannot be truly creative. So yes, it can make us faster, that's great, but it can't make us creative. So there's, there's a limit to what we can do. Well, let me tell you about another study. In this study, researchers took three groups of people. They all had to write a short, interesting, creative story using generative AI. All three groups of people had to write a short, fun, interesting, creative story. One group didn't have access to any AI. One group had access to one idea generated by AI. This was not the full story, just a little idea. Another group had five ideas, five suggestions from generative AI. Now, they measured the difference in creativity between the three groups, and the people who had access to a suggestion from AI became 9% more creative. But that's not what I think is interesting in this study. The most interesting thing is that they found out that the people who were not very creative with five suggestions from ChatGPT were performing with the same level of creativity of the top people in the group. Basically, AI was like a level. It brought everybody to the same level of very high creativity, which is pretty interesting. But now you may say, okay, cool, this is creativity, but it's human plus machine. AI cannot generate interesting, valuable ideas. Well, raise yourself, because I have another study that I want to tell you about. In this study, researchers asked some of the top students in one of the top universities in the United States to come up with ideas for products for the student market, they were likely to retail for less than $50. They got a lot of ideas from the students, and then they asked the same thing to ChatGPT. What they did then is that they took these two groups of ideas, they mixed them up, and they asked to people in the target market, so to other students, how likely are you to purchase this product? So they got some data on how good these ideas were. Well, out of the top 40 ideas, the 40 ideas that got the highest scores, these are called propensity scores, 35 out of 40 were generated with ChatGPT. So now we could have a philosophical conversation around the fact that maybe this is not true creativity, maybe it's just mixing up ideas that all the people had based on the training data, it doesn't matter, I don't care about it. What I care about is the output. And the output is that the ideas generated with ChatGPT were better as measured by propensity scores than ideas from the best students in one of the best US universities. So yeah, AI can have creative ideas. Now, all these studies that I mentioned are studies that have been done in a university. 
in the lab. But now I want to tell you about some studies that have been done in the real world with real companies. The study that I want to mention you, researchers used some people in cast well centers, so call center agents basically, and they gave them some pre-made answers to customer complaints. A customer said, hey, I would like to return my item, then they will have a little answer pre-written by AI. They measured how much more efficient they were thanks to those pre-written AI-generated answers. What they found is that obviously people were more efficient. However, this is not the most interesting thing. The most interesting thing is that once again, the people with the lowest skills, the interns, the people that just started this job, got a very high boost in productivity. Whereas the experts, actually reduced their productivity. And this may be for a few different reasons. It may be that the experts were a little bit unsure about those answers, they wanted to check them out before picking one, and it may be that they were biased, it may be that they thought that AI was really bad and they just wanted to write their own stuff. The researchers don't say why this happens, yet it's very important that this happened. Interns were performing like experts. And the last study that I want to tell you about it's even more shocking. This study was done by Harvard Business School together with the Boston Consulting Group. Now, if you don't know about the Boston Consulting Group or BCG for short, it's one of the top consulting companies in the world. In order to get hired by BCG, you need to be top of the pops, super smart, top grades, and you need to come from, I know, Harvard or some of those universities. And once you get in, you get paid a lot of money. These people get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. It's very selective and these people are supposed to be the top of the world. Now Harvard took 758 BCG consultants and split them into three groups. One group didn't have access to ChatGPT, one group had access to ChatGPT, and the last group had access to ChatGPT, plus they got a little training on how to use it in the best way possible. Then they gave those people some real world tasks. These are consulting questions that we receive from real companies to really make sure that the test was realistic, was something that will actually happen in their work. Notice that these are tasks that they get paid thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars in a few cases to solve. So real stuff. Now, what happened? Well, within the same time frame, participants were completing 12% more tasks on average. They were 25% faster. Once again, not what is interesting to me. The most interesting thing is that if you take the bottom half of the people with, the, with less skills and the top half, so the best consultants, there was a crazy difference in how good their outputs were. The people who were in the bottom half, so the least skilled consul consultants, they got an increase in quality with ChatGPT of 43%, 43% better quality in their output. However, the top people, the best consultants, they got just a 17% improvement. Now, the crazy thing is that a low skilled consultant with ChatGPT was better than the best consultants without ChatGPT. And notice how these are not call center agents. With all due respects to call center agents, these guys were top management consultants. So this 40% increase in quality, it's pretty wild considering the paycheck that these guys get. These are supposed to be the top of the pops, the top people in the world. However, the study didn't stop there. This increase in performance that I just told you was for tasks that researchers called inside the frontier. These are tasks that ChatGPT is known to be really good at. Stuff like copywriting, analyzing a market, things like this. Now, researchers tried also with one task that is outside of the frontier. Let me explain. They gave the consultants three options to help a customer. They had to choose between one of those three strategies and one was definitely the best strategy because if the consultants read all the information they had, all the interviews that were done, all the data that was made available to them, it would have been clear that one was the best strategy to go. Then they had to write a report to try to sell this strategy to the client. Now, the interesting thing is that consultants who used ChatGPT were worse at picking the right strategy. They were more likely to pick one of the two strategies that were just the wrong ones. However, the quality of the recommendation, even if it was for the wrong recommendation, got up. So ChatGPT 
made them worse in picking the right decision, but it made them better at explaining the wrong decision to their customers. And this, I think, goes with the metaphor and sentence that a lot of people have been saying about ChatGPT, which is that it's a very confident bullshitter. It may tell you bullshit, but it's gonna sell that to you in a very convincing way, and this is verified with the consultants. So now let's try to summarize a little bit what we talked about and identify what are the key questions that we need to ask ourselves if we want to find out how ChatGPT and generative AI is going to change our jobs. Number one, AI can make us significantly faster, 37% faster in some cases in doing our job. This means that either our work week is going to be reduced dramatically or the output that people expect from us is going to go up. Which one of the two is going to happen? I believe the first one is more likely to happen because we're already seeing with you know the great resignation that people start to question whether they need to work their ass off that much and so it's possible that we're gonna have shorter work weeks and be still capable of producing the same economic output or more maybe that's number one number two the quality of our work is gonna go up by a lot but the interesting thing is that the effect of ChatGPT on our on our the quality of our work is like a level. It brings everybody up to a very high level. I remember when ChatGPT came out, I was talking about this with a few friends. We were talking about the fact that ChatGPT was either a level or something that makes really good people 10x better. And so it would amplify disparities. And it looks like from all these pieces of research that instead it's reducing disparities, in some cases even deleting them and making everybody perform as experts. So this has profound implications on hiring, for instance, because technically companies could stop hiring experts and hire interns and give them a ChatGPT access. Obviously, exaggerating a little bit, but technically it's possible. And the last thing that I want to talk about is how are we going to compete? As a human being, as somebody who wants to have a good career, as somebody who's ambitious, how are we going to be able to do that? Considering that ChatGPT is going to make everybody perform really well. And by the way, when I say ChatGPT, I mean generative AI as a whole, but everybody talks about ChatGPT, right? So I think what is going to happen is that companies are going to expect really, really good outputs from everybody. Everybody, doesn't matter the level of preparation or experience, with the use of these tools can perform really well. Which means that if you really want to be on top of everybody else, number one, start studying AI now. Stop waiting because you have a crazy opportunity if you start studying this technology before everybody else and become a really good user of AI tools. But that's something I take for granted. After, in a few years, I think what's gonna happen is there are gonna be some specific skills that are more soft skills like leadership, like empathy, like being able to work in teams, like having a vision, like having this kind of big level thinking. These are the skills that are going to be hard to find and highly remunerated by companies. So I think that's where you should try to work on for the future. But for the short term, please learn how to use ChatGPT and all the other generative AI tools out there. And if you're interested in that, my company Academy offers a lot of courses. Sorry for the shameless plug, but it's true. <laughs> I think our courses have helped a lot of people learn how to use AI and have better careers. So check them out at the link below. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. It really helps me. I'm just getting started here on YouTube and it's a platform that I still want to understand and I want the platform to understand me, to understand the content that I do. So sharing helps me a lot. Thank you. See you in the next video.